All right, today we're going to be looking at Chrome Canvas. This is an application that you can use on uh, your um, <coughs> Chromebooks, your uh, tablets, if you have a cell phone, any type of Kindle tablet, iPad, those types of things, pretty much anything will work. Uh, it's cloud-based anywhere you go. It saves what you've been working on online. And you can use it to do most of what we do in this class uh, directly on uh, that application. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how I use it and um, and how you can kind of use it to complete some of your all's projects. Uh, you can see I use it a bunch. This is my online. If you are logged in, let me kind of go back here and I'll show you. If you are logged into your uh, Fayette County account up here in the top right when you're Google, when you simply uh, type in Chrome Canvas into Google, and go to that page, it automatically saves uh, your stuff to your sign in your login to that Google. You can see I use it for lots of different things. I do all kinds of little paintings and drawings and so forth in it. Uh, I want to show you today how it works, the tools in it, how they work, and then uh, quickly we're going to do a uh, project together. Uh, and it, you don't have to do the project I'm doing. You can draw whatever you want to draw. Uh, but I just want to show you how the different uh, features of it work. There's a couple ways that you can start uh, uh, working in it. Um, there are four major tools. If we just start a new drawing, we can see it's got a blank screen there. You've got a pencil tool. You've got a pen tool, a marker tool, and a pastel tool, and then an eraser that can erase all of those. Uh, within each one, there is a size adjustment as well as what we call the opacity or the transparency adjustment how transparent or opaque is that if it's sort of transparent when we lay over it gets darker because we can see the layer underneath of it so we can use that transparency to help create uh, value in our drawings if we do something we don't like we can use this back button here at the top the undo button if we go back too far we want to redo something we can hit the little redo button that's the little, little arrow button that goes back to the right the coolest feature is over here, this top right button where they got the page on page looking button. That's your layers button and each time I hit that plus button it brings in extra layers that I can do drawings on. <clears throat> now again, there's a couple different ways that you can you can use this program. And uh, I want to show you the way that I use it a lot. Um, I use it to do drawings or sketches or uh, uh, and then bring those into Chrome uh, Canvas. And this is one, for instance, uh, that I use as a demonstration often. Um, but this is the uh, oops, this is the original sketch I did. It's on the back of a bill. <laughs> I took a picture of it with my phone and then sent it to myself. But you can take a picture with your uh, Chromebook of drawings or sketches you may have done in pencil and paper. And then I came in and I did like a little... Uh, sketch over top of it, Oops. put a little sketch over top of that, and then over that sketch I added a little color. I wanted to put a little color under the sketch, but over the uh, drawing, and then I came back and added some detail lines, and then I could always get rid of that sketch I did and just kind of see what it looks like, um, you know, as a regular drawing. And so we're going to go today from new from image, and you can choose any image that you've ever saved, any image that you like, and again, you know, you can uh, go look for cool images that you want to start with. We're going to do a fruit bowl today, is the example I'm showing today. And uh, again, I'm just going to show you all the features here, this layers tool or layers editor. I make uh, four or five layers. I'm going to choose a layer uh, a couple above the uh, sketches or the, the drawing itself, and I'm just going to choose my um, my uh, pencil tool here. I'm going to turn the size down a little bit, but I want to turn that opacity up. And all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to sketch, uh, outline the uh, the fruit in this. Or and again, whenever we are doing a drawing, um, uh, whether we're sketching something from memory, whether we're tracing something like we are here, whatever we're doing, we're going to look for those large shapes first, the shapes that make uh, the objects. Um, there have been some famous uh, portrait artists who would proclaim that we don't paint uh, people's faces, we paint the shapes that make the face, and that's a very different concept. And sort of the same thing here, I'm not really 
looking to draw bananas. I'm just going to draw the shape that happens to make those bananas. And so that's kind of a little bit of a different idea. Uh, and so, for instance, this shadow is a big shape. It's, you know, it's a shape that kind of has this long part of this bowl, but also that goes underneath the bananas that comes over here. So, you know, just to, to think of only the shape of those bananas or the shadow of those bananas is going to um, kind of um, uh, leave out uh, the understanding that that's one big shape and our eyes see that as that one shape. And so, again, I'm just going to kind of sketch in basically where everything is. And I'm going to try to do this quickly because I want to be conscientious of time here. All right. And when I do this pineapple, one of the things I want to pay attention to, we talk about looking for those shapes. Uh, when we're doing with this fruit, uh, you know, this is all pretty uh, organic. All these these shapes are very organic. These are shapes you might find in nature. they got real irregular shapes. Uh, those geometric shapes are shapes you might find in geometry class, like uh, triangles and circles and um, spheres or... Um, cylinders and those types of things, sort of man-made like that. But in this uh, uh, little image, we've got some really cool um, geometric shapes that happen uh, sort of naturally, obviously, as part of this uh, pineapple. These sort of, some of them are hexagons, some of them are little like pentagon shapes. They're, some of them are four-sided, five-sided, six-sided there. But they take on these very sort of geometric uh, shapes. And I just want to kind of make sure I see that in this drawing, this sketch. So once I think I've sketched and found most all the stuff, the interesting uh, stuff that I want to sketch here, I'm going to turn that back off and see if there's anything in particular I missed. And I'm not, uh, not seeing much, maybe a little bit there. That's about it. And I'm going to then choose that layer right above. Uh, my fruit and I'm going to choose my pastel tool because I like to add color uh, using my pastel tool. Now when we look at how we choose color in Chrome Canvas there's a couple different ways. You can obviously choose something from the pre-selected colors on the palette or you can choose the custom color range. Once you choose the custom color range you can first select the color you want to use and then you can select the hue of that color that you would like to use. Uh, the hue uh, or we talk about the tint or the shade of that, uh, or the value of that color. When we add white to a color, we get a tint. So the light blues are tints. These darker blues are shades of that blue. This is sort of the purest, most um, saturated with that blue, most the purest blue. Um, I'm going to choose uh, colors that are fairly representative of what I see here, but I want to make it more painterly. So I want to go with colors that are. Uh, maybe a little brighter, uh, and then I'm also thinking about color theory and uh, color theory here, and how uh, this drawing is going to sort of uh, uh, evolve into a painting. And one of the things I want to think about is choosing uh, a sort of a middle uh, range value to do my, my color mapping here. Uh, anytime we sort of lay in uh, the basic color, we can consider that sort of color mapping. We're mapping out where color is going to go. And if we choose sort of the medium range or the medium value of that uh, that color, then we can quickly add in our shadow areas and our highlight areas uh, once we get that color map in. And we can start to see their, our painting and our drawing develop uh, pretty quickly. All right, so there's my yellow. I'm going to pop in a little orange. One of the things I want to talk about real quick as we look at these color ranges, if you look at that spectrum, it's kind of representative of the spectrum that we see. And on it, you'll notice there's so much red, they had to divide it into two sections. There's a lot of red we see. A lot of orange reds, sort of these uh, bright, intense reds, purple reds. We see lots of blues. Blues is a huge range. A green is a huge range of green. But when we look at purples, uh, those teal blues, uh, those uh, yellow to oranges, very small ranges. Uh, and so uh, the reason I mention that is, uh, very uh, often it's difficult to find the color you may most want to use uh, in those particular ranges because literally the little the the section of visible light 
the little waves that we can see uh, is very narrow, very small for those uh, wavelengths of those particular types of colors, those uh, yellows and oranges and those teals, those purples. Let's find a red here. I'm going to go with two different reds here. I'm going to go with sort of a, a, a whiny red, sort of a, got a little of that, that purple in it. And again, I'm just mapping in the color. I just want to find basically where my uh, basic colors are going to go. And I'm going to go with more of an orange red on this one. A little flesh here. All right. I'm going to do my pineapple sort of in this sort of weird green for now. Let's go a little lighter. And again, I'm not, this is not going to be my final color. I'm just kind of mapping it in to see. I kind of want to go with a blue-green for this part of the little pineapple. And then what I want to do is I'm going to turn these layers off so I can see now how my colors are going to play with that background. <coughs> so I can start considering what am I going to use as my background color. And if you'll notice, I'm just mapping in that color real quick, but that sketch is still visible because it's on the layer above. All right, so let's turn off that under layer and take a look at what my color map looks like. So now I want to think about what's my background going to be? Well, what color would make that all pop? I've got lots of yellows, oranges, reds. Those are all very, very warm colors. Uh, even that green I've got is kind of warm. That makes me apple because it's kind of got a lot of yellow in it. The only cool color I have is sort of that teal that's making that uh, that um, that background or the uh, the top of the pineapple. So the background I want to go with, I think I'm going to choose something in this bright range here. I'm going to turn my size all the way up and my opacity. Let's turn that up a little bit, and so I can fill this in quickly. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to undo that because watch what I want to do here. I'm going to I'm going to go to the layer that is beneath. Oh no, I'm not going to stick where I am. I'm on that layer I want. Never mind. Forget I said anything. So again, I'm not really paying attention to making sure that I don't go over lines and that sort of thing. I'm just mapping in basic color. And if I go psh, 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 while, I, while I draw, ignore me. This is the closest thing to playing a video game that I do anymore. So, very quickly, I'm mapping in my blue. All right. I'm anxious to see what you guys are doing. I can't wait to y'all turn in your first works of art. All right, there we go. I'm going to pop in a little sort of kind of do something like this for this little bowl down here. Okay, remember that dark shadow area we talked about earlier? I'm going to go with a dark blue because I kind of want it to, um, again, this is just the, the, I'm just mapping in color here. This is going to get all colored up, uh, covered up again uh, here shortly. Uh, but I just want to kind of find uh, that, um, those shadows, and I kind of want to give it, you know, because I'm going to be painterly here. We want to find some colors, and I want to find some uh, color that, in theory, kind of ties everything back together again. So that blue kind of brings some of that blue from the top. So now I've got basic drawing, <laughs> and so I'm about to start wrapping up my little demonstration here. And the way I'm going to do that is, uh, I'm going to finish up with a color layer here that I put on this layer, and then I'm going to do a uh, an outline because I kind of like this uh, this idea of putting these dark outlines. I love some of the cool stuff that happens with them. <laughs> I like the line in a drawing and in a, in a painting. So I'm going to uh, choose my uh, marker tool. I'm going to turn my opacity about halfway up because now I'm using this more like a um, a, a paintbrush. Uh, I kind of use that marker like a paintbrush, and I'm going to go in uh, to that that yellow range. And I'm going to find something a little darker to kind of, oh, well, that's too big. Undo that. Oh, there we go. Turn my size down. 
And I'm just going to kind of come back in here and find sort of the back sides of the, the shadow areas of uh, these bananas right now. I'm just going to just, just add a little value in here. And again, when we add the value, um, we often call it a push and pull. You're kind of pulling out whites and the light areas and kind of pushing those darker areas. So what I'm just doing here is looking for ways to kind of add some uh, some dark values here and kind of create some separation in these um, in these values. And if you notice, I turned my opacity down because uh, that's sort of the equivalent of um, adding white or lightening that uh, value to it as I bring it towards the top so I can kind of get a little better uh, value change there. And again, I'm not really trying to uh, you know, make things perfect right now. I just want to find and start adding some um, some shadows, some value to this. And so I'm adding my darks right now. Let me go ahead and add a little more. But I'm going to go ahead and start here adding my highlights. So if I come back here, let's go to this highlight. Oh, I like that. And I start thinking about how I would highlight that apple and show that brighter color there. Kind of like that. And again, I can turn that opacity down and kind of blend real softly. I'm going to look and find uh, those reds. Let's kind of go into this dark area here. So you can kind of see how I'm using this like a paintbrush. And I'm just adding a little value into this area. I love this tool. I think it's uh, it's a great tool to draw with, uh, paint with. I'm going to come back in and find a light value that I like there. So let's talk real quick about color theory. <laughs> Adding white doesn't really uh, imply that light. You kind of want to go towards, uh, in particular the reds, towards that sort of... Uh, adding that yellow. I know that sounds weird, but uh, the yellow sort of shows the uh, the light, of the, you know, when light is striking uh, something that's red, it doesn't really make it look pink. Uh, our eyes sort of translate it as going towards that brighter, almost sort of more towards that yellow range, uh, orangey ranges of, um, of the red. And let's see here. Pop in a little value here. All right. And I'm kind of getting to where I'm going to stop the demonstration because of time. And I hope you all have learned how to uh, figure, feel a little more comfortable with drawing and painting. Now, once I got all this done, what I would do is come up to this layer. I would choose my pen tool. I would choose a very dark color. And then what I would do is get rid of my sketch layer. And, uh, or, I don't know if I do that yet, but I would kind of go over that sketch layer. Maybe let's do it that way. And because I really like to highlight and show those, uh, and it kind of gives it those, that kind of graphic design look. If you've seen a lot of, uh, uh, animations lately on, on, uh, commercials and so forth, one of the way illustrators are, are often, um, uh, illustrating now is to, is to kind of show their work by um, accentuating and exaggerating some of those uh, those lines they draw. And that's sort of what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of popping in and, and when we turn the drawing off, you'll kind of see how uh, those rich black lines. And so I can start to even add uh, value like this with, those, with the shading. Um, and that's how I would go back in and add all of that extra detail is part of the shading and shadowing here. Uh, but again, I'm just really wanting you to understand how to use the application. You don't even have to be doing a drawing like this. It's going to be whatever you all want to draw. There we go. Lasers. All right. Almost done. Okay. Well, with this part. Okay. So if I turn my sketch off. You can kind of see, it's kind of popping in. 
those details. Once I get the bananas painted in, it'll look a little better. All right, guys. Have fun. Turn something in really neat. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, don't go anywhere, though. we got to take attendance. Don't ever go anywhere until we get the attendance taken. Thank you.